Hi guys, welcome to the fourth session of uh, Insight from Interns. Today we have Esther, who's a wealth uh, asset wealth management analyst at JP Morgan. Um, we met like two years ago when we did an event together and uh, she's very kindly come back to join us. So uh, yeah, say hi Esther. Hi, thank you for having me. So yeah, so today guys, um, we'll have like 30 minutes um, and Esther will very kindly share her experiences at the firm, some tips on the application process, and then towards the end, we'll have like a QA and a where you can ask any questions that you'd like. Um, this session is recorded. So at the end of this, we'll then post the recording online on our website. Um, and yeah, if you want to ask any questions in the chat box, we'll then bring them back up later as well. So I'll just quickly share my screen and you should be able to see presentation here. Can you see it? Yes, yeah, I can you, see yeah, it. Awesome. So cool. yeah, Esther, please, uh, just a quick introduction for yourself, please. Yeah, so hi everyone, nice to meet you. Um, so I'm originally from France, but um, after high school, I decided to come to the UK and do a bachelor's in business um, and management and then economics at uh, Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge. Um, and yeah, it was a wonderful experience for three years. Um, but obviously I wanted to stay in the UK. So I started looking for a few jobs in London. I applied to the big four and um, so like consulting companies and a few finance uh, companies. And then I got uh, into a graduate program at JP Morgan. And after a year now, I've become permanent for like the past two months. So it's great, really excited. Which is awesome. So yeah, we'll cover the graduate program mostly today. And then obviously it'd be good to share some of your experiences in the office as well. But uh, yeah, to kick things off then, Esther, dive, diving into the application process for JP Morgan. Um, obviously there's three sort of key stages, the AI interview, the phone interview and the assessment center. So it'd be really cool if you could just go through like what was a successful part for your application. Yeah, so um, I mean, it starts basically like just filling in the application template, um, which takes about 30 minutes. And I would say just like the basics, um, cover letter, having an up-to-date CV, um, answering a few questions. And then after that, you're onto your first kind of real interview stage, where it is the AI interview. Um, so for that, um, stage I know I kind of practice on LinkedIn you have a few um, tools that help you to kind of train with AI so like having eye contact with the camera and speaking to them like if it was a real person because I know sometimes when you don't have a little person in front of you it's kind of difficult to um, not look just boring and just answering the question uh, so you have to have to try that in to have that interaction even if there's no one in front of you um, so I think during that stage is just practice, like just train to speak without anyone in front of you and um, make it lively, eye contact with the camera, trying to find a few examples. I know for this, I had like all the notes about JP Morgan um, behind me, my CV on one hand, my cover letter as well. Try to like tie down your speech and like make good points. And then, with the AI I, interview, did they did they like ask a question and then it was like two minutes to answer or was it like unlimited time? Yeah, exactly. So they had they ask a question, you have like um it depends on the questions, but from 30 seconds to like two minutes to prepare. And then you you would have like yeah, one minute thirty mm -hmm. or two minutes to answer. So it is really quick. So you, that's why you kind of have to, but it is ba very basic questions like why would you do this job? Um, why do you think you're qualified? What distinguishes you to, from other people? So um, it's not something, there's no trick question at all. It's kind of just a repeat of what you said in your application process. So, yeah. And how different was that to the, the phone interview? Uh, that was the AI interview. Sorry, how different was it to the phone interview for the next stage? Was oh no, then, then you get into the phone interview where it is mostly um like personality and like how would you react in a group situation how would you deal like situational interview um and then after that after but this one was quite quick I think it was 15 minutes so um nothing it was very like a phone call from one of yeah. the recruit okay yeah 
although it, it was kind of hard because I, I'm not I feel like I wasn't used to phone interviews I, I was used to either being in front of a computer and seeing myself in the questions or seeing the person in front of me so being on the call was kind of difficult um and then the third part was the assessment center so they send you a topic for a presentation that you have to prepare I think you have like one or two days to prepare and you have two topics and you need to choose one so do a quick powerpoint and then during the next day you need to present it to a panel um then during the assessment center so the first part is the presentation the second part is a technical interview and the third part is a personality interview so the assessment center is definitely the like biggest in content but um it is quite spread out so you do have breaks in between and it is different panels all the time so i think that's what's good like i know even if you kind of mess up one of the stages you still get to be okay at the other ones so uh, awesome yeah. and uh, josh was just asked in the chat do you think that the graduate program and the application application process for that was less stressful than a summer internship at jp morgan do you feel like it was quite similar or do you feel like a graduate program is a bit more intense I do think that um, a graduate program is quite is a bit more intense than a summer internship would be because they do expect you to have already done a bit of internships in the past. Um, I know I hadn't have like any experience in the finance industry before, but most of my peers who got in um, did have some experience. Um, but then you also have to choose your role. I know I came in at, for um an asset management role but more in the business management side so once you get in they kind of ask you where you want to go and if you don't say I want to be a portfolio manager or a trader I feel like even if you don't have those background skills you can still get into the company um I mean that follows on nicely to his second question uh Joshua asked which was do you think that what you did is the best route into investment banking division or was it perhaps like from your colleagues you've spoken to like there's probably better ways to get in or do you feel like you did the best way um, I do think that personally it was the best for me because I wasn't sure I wanted to get into the finance industry and so getting into that graduate program mine didn't have any rotations but because I chose to I, because I had already a broad role where I was interacting with lots of different teams uh, but some other graduate programs at JP Morgan do rotations every three months so I do feel like it's a great way to kind of Got what you want from the industry because it's so massive like I was having a chat three days ago with the person working in public relations for JP Morgan and then like a trader on the other side like it's so broad th that you can't even like fathom all the jobs that you could have so I think it is a great way to not not be um only in one role and kind of get that over like, try and get a big feel of everything and then you can kind of specialize later in right with, yeah with exactly awesome so going into like the work life test um, obviously you you just joined two months ago congratulations on on getting that uh permanent role so I'd be curious to sort of like dig into that both on what it was like during the scheme but also how that compares to you know in, in your life now uh, yeah. but yeah what did that typical day look like for you um so I mean I think arriving as a graduate as well is great because you do have a cohort. So I had people all over the business who were as lost as me. So we were having like our coffees in the morning, lunch together. Um, and when you have like the stupid questions, you can ask them without being scared. Um, so I do think that the graduate program is a great way to arrive with friends already within the firm. Um, so my experience was great and I had an awesome manager and I think that's one of my biggest tip to everyone here is choose the people you work with and not necessarily your job um because definitely I had a manager with whom it clicked at the interview and he pushed me until the end um he had a super great promotion in another firm in February last year and he waited for me to get my permanent role last summer before quitting, like you need to have these people, especially at the start of your career, who will push you and put your name into like whatever you need. So yeah, definitely choose yeah, your employer no, as you, well. I think the people around you are so, so important. Like you said, like I think that's a make or break with your career, especially early doors as well, because likely that your manager, if he went to the other firm, that they probably might take you along if you liked you or you know promote you in, in different ways. That's that's awesome. And what were the meetings like with with the with the guys there? 
Um, so yeah, so I had teams with, so with the graduates and then we had internal team meetings. Uh, my team was really tiny, so we were only four people, but because I was doing the other side of the whole operation to teams and then interacting with the investment bank, um, we kind of had also all these more formal meetings with senior people. Um, so I mean, I think I liked the fact also that we have very different meetings. So we had those like coffee meetings and then you have those super important lunches with the clients where you have to be like proper and dress up and then you have those team meetings. So, um, but they guide you a lot. I know at the start, they're really careful about having a young graduate and conscious of this because especially at JP, I mean, I, I bet it's any other firm as well, but they have so many acronyms. I was so lost at the beginning. And we all had like cheat sheets on the side for all the acronyms and people were pinging me, like um, texting me all the time whenever someone was using one, like, oh, that's what it means. Um, so I think as long as you show that you really want to learn and that you really want to attend all the meetings that you can, people are super helpful. Um, no, that's good so to I mean, hear. I mean, especially I, I know it's a big, scary thing to like go into a large firm and you feel like you're in the deep end. So having that around you and that support, I think is, is super important. So like with the, you mentioned like the team were quite small and you're obviously dealing with the operations side. What was that like for you in terms of responsibility and, and also your team as well? Like what were they responsible for? Yeah, so um, I work in the oversight team. Um, so we kind of oversee the whole of operations. So whenever a trade doesn't go through or there's an issue with whatever the portfolio managers asked the investment bank, uh, so the portfolio managers from asset management as to the investment bank, uh, we kind of deal with this. So we do the crisis management. Also, like, for example, during the Russia um, crisis, we kind of had to deal with all the trades that were blocked because the currencies were blocked and we weren't allowed to use them. So we had to block all the trades um, and doing the reporting to senior people. So it's kind of a very broad business management role. So my role is a bit, different from the other finance roles that you would have um but I mean I was around like I said like a great manager and so that's why he was like during the first eight months if you do any mistakes it's because I trained you badly so you can just try to automate anything try to like tell me if you think there's a process that is wrong and if you ask a dumb question or you do bad work or to senior people you do a really poor meeting or reporting it's my fault so then I think that kind of gave me the confidence to go also above and beyond and present every single ideas to the senior people because I know that if there was an issue my manager would kind of take the blame for it no I so. you need that accountability and I think that that's a great example of that teamwork in the sense that you know being thrown in the deep end of a big company you are going to make mistakes and you have to accept that so having that support from people like your managers and your team I think that's, that's super important right in terms of like your first couple of days in there but yeah I mean going on to that like obviously it's, I've heard compared to other firms that what you're just saying there is, is that it's pretty friendlier than than other companies and Joe's going on to that now like what was that work culture like within the, within the firm yeah so I, I mean I think the finance industry itself does have a culture of putting in the hours uh very meritocratic uh but I do think that JP Morgan not wanting to preach it but compared to other firms from what I've heard um is having a bit more town halls cocktail evenings every week and like morning breakfast networkings twice a week I think we do have that culture of trying to bond a bit more because but I think it's because our CEO as well has kind of that businessman um idea and soul that he wants to give to the business and it's more like Salespeople are really important in our firm. So um, doing all these networking events for us is really, really important. Yeah, um, looking after I, people, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I think I really like that opportunity to just meet people so easily. Um, and yeah, I think I was also super surprised at the horizontal mobility. Like I thought it was going to be, oh, you need to be an analyst, then you need to be an associate and then VP in your role and to get to ND and stuff like this. But it's really encouraged to go to other teams and see what's out there. And even moving between the investment bank, the asset ma management division, um, the Chase Bank and retail banks, um, 
it's such a massive organization and they that they want to keep you inside so whenever you ask to go shadow someone else it's especially at the start of your career you do have lots of like free days and free time so for like two or three days it's really encouraged to just go see other teams and see what they're doing see what the whole business is about and I think that was also a great position to be in to kind of comprehend your role more and do a better job at it. Yeah, so, so I mean that reflects like what um, there was a question from Joshua earlier on like what's the best route into investment banking division what you just said there it kind of it's quite clear that as long as you get yourself in the in the firm it's relatively flexible in terms of where you want to go in the long term and I think especially starting your career it's more like taking the opportunity first and then specializing in, in what you want to do next right? Yeah exactly and we have offices in like New York, Delaware, um LA um Bournemouth Edinburgh Geneva Paris oh you have something but you have one in Bournemouth wow yeah, I'm we, have yeah Hong Kong. we have offices everywhere and so I think that's also like I know so many people who just wanted to move to New York and so they still work with their team in London but they do the hours in New York so having that fl- obviously if you're a trader or portfolio manager you have to do during trading times so that's the only issue but you, mobility super encouraged um yeah that's yeah. awesome no, nice one but yeah I mean, like, let's talk about bouncing back because i think that it's super important as loads of students we're making tons of applications and it's difficult to keep going through it despite getting rejected time and time again um, and obviously there's a lot of consistency required to like make it successful uh, with an application so yeah like did you have any rejections and if you did like how did you how did you handle them yeah um yeah massively <laughs> Um, the only thing is that I think for me, it was easier to accept in the sense that, so I finished my degree and then I had an internship lined up in Paris um, and they offered me a job to stay. So I now wanted to come back in London um, and also I had a master's lined up in London. So I kind of wanted to apply for a role just to see, would I be able to get it? Would I, sorry, the sirens in London, it's great. <laughs> Um, so I, I kind of just wanted to apply for a role just to see if I could get it and keep my options open. But I wasn't like, I did have backup plans. So I think for me, it was a bit less stressful than other friends who, for them, they just wanted to go straight into work and didn't have any like master's plan or their jobs lined up. Um, but I did get lots of re- rejections. Um, I know my plan was to work at L'Oreal in public relations. I could not get any internships in this um and I got into uh EY as well and then it got shut down because of COVID so very desperate but um you know I think it's lots of training 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 and this application to be fair I did not think I would get it I kind of applied and went stage by stage and as long as you prepare and you have other backup plans like you know awesome um, I mean, going on to the, think, with, with, sorry, with the application, I've noticed that Aman and uh, Mahir, they've asked uh, two questions, which is, you know, what's the expectation times? Because obviously you're managing, you know, other backup plans like EY and Masters and everything else. What was the time frame between the assessment centre and then receiving the job application, uh, sorry, the job uh, invitation? Yeah, so I think the applications actually opened in November. I think I applied quite late because I applied in about February. Um but so the first stage so from the application and the AI interview those were really fast those were probably two weeks after um you get an answer that you're going to have your phone interview then the phone interview kind of waits until spring and then after that phone interview you have about two weeks before the assessment center which would be June and then after the assessment center, it's within four days, I think I got the answer. Oh, okay. So this is so really quick. Straight after the assessment center, they know exactly who they can Yeah, on. exactly. But I know I think they cut lots of people during the phone interview. So I think, um, because I think we're like 8,000 and then during the assessment center, we're only like 50. So obviously wow. the <laughs> was way faster. There's a lot there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that's why it's just about looking confident, practicing I did so many interviews for companies that I did not really want in the end just to practice for my interviews for JP Morgan or other firms that I really wanted so no that's amazing advice I think that's really underestimated it's just making so many applications where you just get 
experience under your belt. You don't get as nervous in front of those phone interviews. And then the companies later on, if you delay them, the ones that you really want to, you're probably going to end up performing better and get the job, right? Which is super important. But what was the what was the biggest challenge like during like the entire internship, whether it's from the application process all the way up to the end, like what was like the biggest challenges that you faced? Um, I think the biggest challenge was trying to find out also what you want to do and where you want to be. I know for me, like I deferred my master's over, so I was still deciding whether I wanted to go back um, and then trying to find out where you want to be. I know so many people who were in uh, graduate schemes didn't have headcount in their teams. So they had to find another role in the, within other departments. However, the firm does help so much to find other like once they have you in you're kind of sure to have a job the only thing is that you're not sure to have a job where you want so I think the massive issue is try to talk to as many people as you can especially your first year try to go to as many events like it's so easy to be like oh I'm a new person let's go for a coffee can I understand what you're doing can I shadow you for a day and try to really figure out what you want to do because I still don't know what I want to do and I think that's the massive the hardest thing in life to kind of know where you want to go so and yeah. I think also like if you know too much you end up putting yourself into a hole which you can't get yourself out of and it can be really really stressful but also if you're targeted at a very specific job role or something that's going to happen in 10 years time you might miss out and be blind to other opportunities that probably would have been better anyway so yeah I think it's I think there is a benefit to like having that relaxed approach to not knowing exactly what but maybe like something that you at least enjoy doing we're going on to the final bit Esther with like your advice when people are applying for internships and, and graduate roles, all the people here, they're probably going to be making those applications. But one of the things that Joshua asked just now, which was like, how many articles or sort of like references do you have for commercial awareness when it comes to the interviews? Like, did you have to use many when you were like researching for the application process? Did you have to reference anything commercial awareness related? So you didn't have to. I know that for my AI interview, I didn't. Um, and for the phone interview either. I know for my assessment center, I did prepare a lot because on the presentation, I did want to reference, like I referenced one of uh, Jamie Diamond's, our CEO's quotes that during a conference, like I picked a random conference on YouTube, picked one sentence that he said at the middle of the video and then referenced it because I thought, you know, it does prove that you are listening, you're interested. I mean, you should definitely know what happened the last few days. Um, like, you know, now, for example, know what we what JP Morgan says about the COP summit. It's like, um, like know where the rates are, just basics. But I didn't have any knowledge about really thorough articles. Just know the global economy. I mean, you know, the global inflation rates, interest rates and massive news at the moment. I would say the bigger, but... the bigger picture, right? Exactly. Yeah. Ah, cool. And then um, really interestingly, Carla, who she says, um, hi, Esther, thanks for being here. I'm French too. And I'm doing a master in management in France in a target school. I'd like to work in IB in London. Do you often see French people in IB? What advice could you give me to succeed? Hi. Um, yes. Yeah, so there's so many French people um, because we do have massive offices in Geneva and Paris. And um, I do think that reaching out to people, firstly, like feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn um, and just look up who's posting the job and message them. I was amazed at how available senior people are for you. Um, just ask them for a coffee. Um, and yeah, I mean, entering the investment bank, especially after master's, like I, I didn't have a master's degree um and I still got to go into it so I, I don't think it's that difficult I just think reach out to the people because it will definitely make a difference and it will make them look at your application twice so yeah no, that's awesome and what I'll do now if I can I'll um I'll just unmute everyone and if anyone had any questions if you want to raise your hand and then I'll unmute so if anyone has any questions just raise your hand and uh you can ask us a question Looks like we've answered all the. Oh, I'm okay. Okay. And yes, slash chat. I've asked to unmute. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? 
Hi, yes. Hi, um, so I've been invited to do the recorded interview and I'm planning on doing it tomorrow. So would you have any kind of like final advice on um, how to prepare maybe? Yeah, um, I mean, definitely look at the role description and your, what I did with it was, I mean, I did it during my cover letter. So I think um, that's what, that was good, but definitely have it in mind or behind the wall that's what I did on the wall behind your computer um but have all the requirements that they state in the application and try to find an example for each like when they ask about teamwork say oh I, by the way at university I did that group project and I helped that person for um to be more confident so we went to extra classes after or say um technical skills oh I did this finance course online just because I wanted to learn a bit more than what I was learning at university so try to go through each state of the application and have an example in mind and I think just you know smile look confident even if you're not and yeah that'll be the best I'm sure you'll do great good luck we can't hear you <laughs> there we go. I forgot to unmute. Thank you, Esther. So yeah, um, thank you very much, Esther. Awesome to, to have you on. If anyone has any other questions, you can either ask myself, uh, Oliver at our gen, but could it UK, or I'm sure Esther's more than happy to, to connect with you on LinkedIn. We do have two more events coming up. Um, so next week we have Rebecca Jeffrey and Ellen Taylor. They were spring interns at PwC, a very, very similar format to uh, what we did tonight. And then also another JP Morgan analyst, but for the summer uh, application side of it. So a bit different to the graduate program. Um, and that'll be on the first week of December um, at 4 p.m. There's a QR code there, you can scan that and you can register. And again, it'll be a very, very similar format. So um, yeah, thank you very much, Esther, for your time. And thank you everyone for joining and, and asking those questions. You're on mute, I think now, Esther. Oh, okay, hang on, there we go. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you so much, Oliver. Thank you, everyone.